Hey everybody, this is Glenn Biggs from Community Arts of Bellevue. This is Thursday night again, uh, a little bit, sort of, kinda. Yes. Uh, and I would like to uh, just welcome all of you to be with us this evening. Thanks for being on, on the show. You are in for a treat. We are going to um, take a, a peek at someone's home in the West Nashville area that we absolutely adore and love. Uh, this is my great friend, Terry White. Terry, thank you for being with us this evening. And um, we're going to take you around to show you some magnificent architecture, some magnificent gardens, and some magnificent art, uh, uh, event settings as well this evening. So sit back, pour yourself a cocktail, and enjoy the show. Terry, thank you so much for being with us. You're Cheers. most welcome. Thank yeah. you for coming again. <laughs> Here we are. First time for y'all with sound, uh, but uh, we've sort of been through this before with a few technical difficulties. Uh, but I love showing off my home and garden, uh, especially the garden. Uh, so let's get started. Let's go for Come it. Well, I'll you follow know. you. We're, this is the front entrance, but we're, uh, we're going to go down and see our first pond. Sure. Uh, I have, I think, nine Beautiful ponds. old boxwoods. Uh, these two boxwoods were original here uh, when I uh, bought the property. Everything else is stuff I have done. These awesome. two crepe myrtles uh, here were the first two things that I planted 25 years ago when I bought the house. Uh, and that boxwood back there, uh, the largest one, yes. is uh -huh. one of the original um, Cheekwood Mansion boxwoods uh -uh. Uh, from the 20s. Uh, they did the proving ground, the southern proving ground for boxwoods uh, as part of their gardening uh, expanse and, uh, for cheekwood. Well, they're known for their cheek, their, yes. their boxwoods for and sure. This property was part of the original cheekwood property. Wow. They had to sell it to raise money to start the museum. <laughs> but I found this boxwood up against the, the cheekwood property line, and it took me two weeks and dragging it behind my van to get it moved down here uh, out from under a thing. It's, it's done okay. Oh, it's, it looks it looks very happy. Boxwoods go very slowly, so it has. It took it ten years, really, to come back from its trauma. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know. Well, while we're at the front door and this beautiful, these gorgeous steps up to the front door, tell us about the house a little bit. Well, the house was built in 1959 and 1960 by a Hungarian artist and his wife. Okay. Um, there were refugees, actually, who came to America from Hungary and um, created a home and a life. Shandor Bodo uh, right. was the artist and he designed the house and built much of it himself. He dug footings. Uh, he would get some money, he would buy $500 worth of concrete and just sort of built the house. Wow. So it's a solid concrete stone structure, Okay. except for the roof. Uh, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it, um, but I do typically call it Frank Lloyd Wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, he was a big fan, a big fan, but uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was not known for, for roofing uh, uh, houses that well, and that has sort of been uh, an, a constant issue. The house itself is solid, but the roof has been a problem, but as of today, after eight <laughs> weeks, I have a new roof. Okay, good. That should last me, the, I hope, we'll the, the rest of my life <laughs> until, in this house. Until the next ice form uh, happens. These uh, beautiful crepe myrtles. Yeah, I mean, they really... Uh, uh, do make me happy. I do not murder them. I do not cut them back. I did a couple of times in the first five years of growth to get the canopy to the level that sure. I wanted it to be. Yeah. But now I do not murder them, and they bloom profusely, and uh, they provide this wonderful, yeah. wonderful shade. Uh, There's for, nothing like them for the front uh, front entry. Sure. There really isn't. Uh, well, let's walk on back. And this is some of my hellebore collection. I have lots of hellebores, another favorite of mine. Are they easily to... to um, um, They're really, really quite easy. Split up? I don't know. Well, you don't have to split them up. They had these little pods 
and if you will pull the pods out about it probably about three or four weeks before they have little seeds in them and you can just literally scatter them on the ground oh my goodness and uh you've just we just redid, redid, redid it. Uh, a whole new thing. Well, and, I'm going to need some of those. Uh, that's that's how I started, uh, and they're evergreen in the winter. Uh, you just have to cut back last year's leaves in the spring because they get a little ugly. Okay. Um, but uh, other than that, they're they're very low maintenance. They love shade. Not much else will grow where they will grow, but they're really quite happy. And this is beautiful water my feature. First, uh, first water feature that I built uh, from you know from scratch and it has a frog that lives here and he's happy <laughs> and and it's all pieces and parts these uh, the rim yep is, are antique cobblestones mm. uh, if they had stories that they could tell of where they've been and the ballast of ships uh, well but the rest of it were just sort of pieces and parts I did make the, the cattails out of copper you made those yourself I did but the, You're so amazing. The bowl uh, came from Costco. It was part of a, it had a, a stand, and I just wanted the bowl. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, and then I took a, an inexpensive, cheap, Goodwill find copper bowl. Oh, my goodness. And drilled a few holes in it. And if I want to, I can have that kind of spout, but birds like it better for bathing if there's not so much splash and it just is fresh water running. So I have lots of... See, if I had tried that, my bowl would be up in this great myrtle somewhere. Well, actually, it, it was the first go-rounds or two until I got everything adjusted just right. Uh, you know, it, drilling the holes in exactly the right place to get the water to fall was, sure. was actually the hardest part of it. That's genius. But you'll see, uh, you know, boxwoods, yep. hellebores, sure. and hydrangeas. These hydrangeas are uh, in pretty deep shade, so they come out later. Later, but they come out completely fully uh, like the rest of them. They just are always a couple of weeks behind. Okay. Uh, this dogwood, um, it's a hot pink dogwood. Mm. Uh, it was original to the house as well. Oh, uh, one of the dogwoods the, don't usually live that long, do they? Uh, I wow. don't know. There's a blight supposedly, and I worry about these brown tips. Um, on this one section here, but it's done that every year for about five years. And I do fertilize it lightly with compost and it, it keeps growing, you can see, because I built this arbor um, to shade this side of the house and you can see how much growth since I built it, uh, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago. Okay. Uh, all of the dogwood is gone, so it's still happy. It does seem so. Still happy. <laughs> I, would, I would think it is. Yeah. Move and back. here's my little firewood collection. <laughs> but this goes up to, um, and I'm sorry, I'm... I'm a little hobbling. You're I, gimpy. I, I broke a toe and <laughs> ripped a toenail off. Oh, good lord. Not, uh, not building arbors, <laughs> not hauling stones, but doing a wedding. Hanging a wreath on a church yeah, front that's door. that's when we all about kill ourselves, Somebody isn't came it? out. <laughs> Bless it. <laughs> but we're going to my, um, my favorite spot, which is the moss garden. Oh, wow. And it's moss and herbs. Uh, old step. Are these? I built the structure. Or did you put no, these I in? built these. Wow. I built this wall here, and I built these steps out of antique cobbles. Um, and you know, my skill level improves as I get. I was going to say because I would not even know where to begin <laughs> on this. One. Well, you can see there is a crack in there that I will have to deal with. Uh, here some time, but I poured these uh, concrete steps down there after it started cracking to support it so that it wasn't pulling away. And it has stopped the crack. Okay. But um, snakes like to live down there. And I, oh, well, not, that, not that great with snakes. 
This is my little rose and herb garden. Um, this was an They're old, still blooming. Look at yeah. Them. This is an old gravel driveway. This entire expanse up here, and all of um, the stone structure up here, I did a year ago, and I built this specifically for roses, and I built this one specifically for edible herbs and tomatoes I because I was herbs. able to bring in all organic dirt. The rest of the property, I'm not gonna eat anything that, that comes out of the ground here. So organic was not Yes. Yeah. I mean, we get all of the runoff of all the chemicals from cheekwood and I'm sure they have to, on a botanical garden, use chemicals and um, all of their water comes down through here. I thought about that. So I just, uh, yeah, I'd rather deal with an organic gardener, <laughs> somebody right. who knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see I have more, more fountains. Uh, I don't see my little frog friends out. Oh, there's one. Over there, I have a smaller frog in the small pond and a bigger frog in the big pond. Well, I see. Uh, but is. Sunday, I built a little lily pad in the small pond because the little ones spent too much time treading water and he looked like he couldn't get in and out of the pond. So I built this for him. Well, the, the big frog has decided to to inhabit the <laughs> lily pad. Uh, so they they have to be friends. Uh, Go. But I have I, lots of rosemary. I love the smell of I rosemary. Love it, yes. um, you know, I like it on potatoes, but that's about it. But I really love having it along pathways, anywhere that I can just brush my hand through it. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And I'm a little bit like that basil, also rosemary. with basil. Oh, yeah. Yes. And this is um, behind uh, us here are, is what I call the basil bar because this is where this gets the most sun yep. and so we have lots of basil again aromatic you can, um, never, have you can never have too much basil you know it's just so, so it. it's so nice to um to be able to it's pretty. uh well it, it's also pretty it's also pretty but again i like to just rub my hands yep, through the it uh, and the, the flavor and the pesto and, and the this helps um my compost bins are um, up here. We won't go up there, um, but I just finished these steps uh, to make it a safer passage to get to the compost bin. But having all of the rosemary and the basil down here close to it helps with, sometimes it smells in the middle of the summer when it's really hot, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't mind Let's it. Let's call it compost. Uh, yes, right. I don't mind it. So Terry, tell me a little about your wine glass. I've noticed that, I just happened to look up and was like, there's something missing here. <laughs> well, this I is... I feel like with, with Terry White, this is intentional. It, it is. It's it's my garden wine glass. Uh, I, I broke the uh, pedestal off of it and then filed it so I didn't hurt myself. Yeah? But okay. as I walk around the garden, I know me, and I'm always going to stop and weed yeah. or, or do something. Or do something. And I can take the wine glass <laughs> and just stick it in the ground. Well, of course you can. Uh, and as opposed to me breaking another wine glass, trying to find a level hard spot for it to sit on so so it's it's what I it's what I do I solve it's problems a, it's a I solve problems but this leads up into the Oh, the, sh uh, the shed. I call this a summer house. The summer house. The summer right. house. The shed. That's the um, shed at all. It, you know, it was for me to be able to, um, I've got um, connectors for a hammock if I want to spend the night up here on, a, okay. on the perfect summer night. I, I, I've only done it once. It quickly became um, my garden shed and uh, a place to store my tools. Uh, yeah. Uh, and well, you need any place for that, right? But I can clean it up pretty quickly. Behind those curtains are my uh, woodworking tools, saws, etc. And all of this does go behind the curtains, so that oh. I could serve wine there. But I should have known. But that. in the meantime, I built the little basil, basil bar. bar. Yeah. <laughs>
I should have known the multifunction of... And our intrepid photographer and producer is going to show you behind the curtain. <laughs> uh, much to my dismay, but, you know... Uh, we don't have much control over this. Uh, right. Uh, in for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, you know? And So tell me what you have. Are these, like... These, these came from, these like came from Target, trees. from the Smith Hawkins collection. Uh, they oh, are they're boot trays. <laughs> they're boot trays they to are. kick off your wet and muddy boots. But I made awnings out of them. Um, I did drill holes so they drain uh, have, properly. I have one of these trays. You'll see them in several places. <laughs> it's called repurposing. Um, I I originally bought them for an event for a wedding, and they've been stored and I've just used them creatively through, throughout. Wow, uh, that, that is clever. When we get down to the patio, I'll uh, show you my most recent, um, you know, uh, concoction of copper trays, you know. Ooh, this hydrangea, I have not, that it, has blooms and slice some I've seen you. It, it has. Uh, this is one of the few French hybrid varieties that I have because in Nashville, they don't produce blooms regularly. You know, maybe once in four years, once in five years. Really? Um, they only bloom on old wood, last year's wood. Okay. And if we have a late freeze or a late frost, it kills the stem that has the sap in it to produce a bloom. It doesn't kill the plant, it's just the tip which produces the bloom, won't produce a bloom. Kind of like the French, a little picky. A little they? picky, mm -hmm. you know. So this is, these were some that I bought um, for an event and I cannot stand to ever get rid of any plant. So, but they've been glorious this year. Beautiful. But last year, eh, not so much. Year before, not so much, you know. Absolutely uh, glorious. It's just, uh, kind of one of those things. And I do have very alkaline soil, so they are pink. Um, I believe they might have started out blue. Um, but to keep them blue, you've got to acidify the I soil. Like pink. It's a great contrast. Well, no, no, it, it, it is, it is. Um, they don't last as long as the ones that I have the most of, the Annabelles. They'll last really into, uh, into October. Um, they'll turn green again after they turn white, if they ever turn white. <laughs> is yeah. parsley? This is curl leaf parsley, yeah. but it hasn't really gotten curly more yet. Basil. More, basil. more basil. Mm, yes. And I just finished, um, this fountain has been here as is, but I just drilled the hole through the ball. Uh, I've been wanting to do it for a long time and just never got around to it and add a second pump so that water comes out of the top of it. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with I like it. That. I haven't disguised my, my hose yet, but you know, <laughs> there, there's it'll all, happen. it'll happen. There's always time for, for well, that. I'm sure I'm going to come film again and you'll yeah. figure out how to hide the hose. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of the pots up here have fire screens on them. Okay. That's to keep the birds from picking out my moss and throwing it all over the place. Uh, <laughs> these are just uh, fire pit tops. Um, and some of the moss in the pots is, you know, kind of special, uh, rarer mosses and things like that um, that I like. So I just, you know, I love my birdies, but leave my moss alone. Uh, I'm also seeing a little bit of a motif, like around your around your, your plantings with the stone and the and the rocks. Well, I, you know, it's it's one of those these things. These are not rocks, so I, these I, are... These are one-eighth... Uh, volleyball. These are one-eighth cobbles. It's called a one-eighth cobble. But the balls are... Um, a bocce ball set. Bocce balls. This was yes. yes. This um, years ago, uh, I had a couple of friends that played bocce ball, and um, this was the bocce ball court. So this is homage to that. <laughs> this is my bocce ball well, display. You use them cleverly and beautifully. That's, yeah, that's great. And after the the moss, maybe in another year, I don't see any reason why we could not play bocce ball 
on the moss. What do you think? I, I don't see any reason. Would it endure that? Yeah, it, uh, it endures walking, and I, I tromp on it all day long, back and forth, back and forth. Put you your know. wine glass in, uh, dig it up. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, absolutely, hey. you know. Um, I love the umbrellas up. Well, I, I refer this is the umbrella farm. <laughs> there you go. They seem to be very healthy and there's lots of them. And yes, they, 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 they seem to happy. like it here. They look totally uh, happy. But they're here basically for shade, for new moss. When I first started planting the moss okay. up here uh, a year ago, the sun, uh, high noon, comes straight in here. It's the only place on the property that gets full sun. Uh, and it's only for a couple of hours. But it, you know, this moss does like sun sun will survive, but it thrives if it doesn't get baked. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Does this take a lot of watering? Not a lot. Really? 10 minutes to water, you know, 8,000 square feet of moss. <laughs> uh, you don't have to water it like a plant. You just have to mist it. Just keep it warm. Just mist it. Let it know it's you know, got some Yeah. Water. Just give it a little bit of water. But it's just, you know, another, another pot with more special moss. <laughs> I, you know, I don't mind the covers and I take them off when I'm up here um, for the most part, but when I'm not here, as soon as I turn my back, the robins come. The robins all show back up. Yeah, uh, and robins robins are the ones that do uh, really the most damage. Um, Your hydrangeas are absolutely glorious. How many have you got, do you think? I, I think I have about 600. Oh my goodness. Um, and most of the 600 are Annabelle's, Limelight's, and the oak leaves have been the pretty fabulous they this have year. They've been gorgeous this yeah. year, haven't they? Yeah. So point out what's what. Okay, this stand right here, those are Annabelle's. These are Annabelle's, okay. Those back there, further away, the uh, sort of panicle shaped bloom, yep. uh, those are oak leaves. Right. And the Limelight's don't bloom till July. Oh, okay. Um, so they're just sort of, they're, I don't like mixing them together. So there's a whole row behind this row of boxwoods and uh, down there where we came up the cobblestone steps. I've got a bunch of limelights down there and I've got different varieties. People have gotten creative uh, with hybridizing. Um, limelights because people seem to like them okay uh so i've got several varieties the annabelle's pretty much it you know an annabelle is an annabelle uh it's an arborescence um which means as opposed to a french hybrid which means it only blooms on new wood so i cut these all back uh, French, not quite so picky. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I cut them all back uh, in the winter. And uh, usually I make large arrangements in my empty pots from my annuals and things, and they root. Um, they do root. They do root. Okay. And that's Is that how, how you propagate a lot of yours. That's Is how just I keep getting more and more That's and more. That's great. I was going to ask, do you divide these or how do you... This, uh, this is a limelight. Okay. Uh, and limelight will propagate in the same way, same form or fashion. Um, many of my limelights, uh, again, are propagated, uh, where I just take the bloom, stick it in potting soil, and leave it outside. Okay. And, and February it has roots. Nice. Um, a lot of people use rooting hormone, but I have not, and I have, but I have found that there's not much difference between using it or not. It wants to root. Stick them in about, um, about two and a half inches. I tried to um, put underground the first full nodule and then the cut edge. Okay. Uh, and usually the roots come under, out of the nodule. Under just water? No, no, in the ground. Just I mean, the potting soil, potting soil. I, I throw away my annuals and then I make an arrangement with what like video? 150. I have, I have a video. I have a video about it on my YouTube channel. 
uh, about propagating so hydrangeas. Tell us about your YouTube channel. Well, I mean, I want to promote that as well. Well, it's something that uh, Emily and I started a, a year ago. Actually, we're having our one year anniversary um, very soon, within a week or maybe today. Um, and um, it's, it was just sort of a way to, for me to share um, some of my experiences. I'm not a professional. There are tutorials, but I'm careful about tutorials because I really don't know what I'm doing. I just do That's it. That's really not true, but I, okay, I'm willing I, to play that character. My, well, no, my biggest <laughs> thing is I have no fear. I'm willing to try anything. Yeah, and I love that. If, uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That encourages our viewers. And it will uh, become something else. Uh, Okay, I mean, you sort of seen the moss garden and the hydrangeas up here. Oh, and, it's beautiful. And I didn't really call attention down at the end. Look this way. Uh, down at the end yeah. uh, of the moss garden is a sundial. It's beautiful. Uh, by an artist that I met who repurposes. It's all made out of old junk and things and scrap and wow. stuff, you know. Wow. So I was immediately taken with that. Sure. Um, and I felt like it was a perfect accent for the mosque. Well, I mean, just the visual is yeah. amazing. Let's it's go down so to uh, to the sure. outdoor room and a few more ponds. So while we're walking, like Terry, I know you also have a uh, a video series out. I do. It's I'd like to hear uh, more about. And I think Terry, our viewers would too. Terry White, design your life. It's just me making a pool out of myself, trying to ah, teach people. There's no such thing. Uh, I'm not great at tutorials because I don't really know what I'm doing. I figure it out along the way. Okay. And so it's it is difficult for me to tell somebody to do it the wrong way like I did it so yeah, right. but, but still hopefully you'll learn and my my real crux um, of starting the show was not to necessarily show people how to do things mm -hmm. but to inspire them and it does that I've watched a number of them they're great create your life for sure. you yeah. you know and, right. and don't don't waste time you know, I want to, always wanted to live in a spa, so I'm trying to create a spa. Uh, you've done a good job of that. <laughs> I think you have. But come on, let's let's okay. go down to uh, this is so that is on YouTube, and it's Terry White by design. Uh, design your life. Design your life. Design, Terry White, your, design life. your life on YouTube. Go yeah. check it out, folks. But you see, this is um, uh, my time garden. Um, Nobody has too much time. Nope, nope. You can never, never have a, enough time. Never. Uh, but this is German time. Uh, I was going to say, I don't, it, my, my time doesn't bloom. It uh, happens to be particularly beautiful and has been for about a month. Uh, and English time is a very similar growth habit, low, but it has a lavender flower. Or maybe some people call it pink, but I call it lavender. Okay. It has a little purple tint to gotcha. it. Gotcha. And I'm uh, noticing ginkgos around a lot, too. Yeah, I have ginkgo trees. Um, you know, my whole thing, a, a ginkgo has not changed since prehistoric times. It's one of the few plants that has not evolved or mutated. or It's still solid as rock. Moss is also one of the few things oh. that has not changed okay. uh, or, or mutated. And, and for some reason, that in stone that is forever, those are just things in of my life that have become attractive to me. I, I think maybe it, I'm trying to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I realize it's not going to work, you know. I would certainly go on. Uh, 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 but, <laughs> But I would like for things that I've done, um, you know, with the boxwoods and the ginkgos and the moss and the stonework, um, I would like to think that it will last long after, long after I'm gone, you yeah, know, and right. find the right person who will take care of it. And, it's certainly be a shame for it not to live yeah. for a long, long, long time. This um, area here, um, is a different kind of boxwood. It's wintergreen. It's part of the uh, sort of Korean boxwood family. 
but um, I do love them just as well. That's such a thing. Uh, they, they do pretty well in shade, and they are underneath this magnolia tree that I do love, but sure. oh my God, they're such a mess. They're such a mess. <laughs> the magnolias? Yeah, uh, they yeah. can be. Yeah, and I just cleaned up, you know, a few days ago. These are some more propagated limelights here. Okay. Uh, and so I feel like there's a story behind these candelabras that are hanging from the cedar. Those are, again, repurposed. Those were some candelabras that I had in my business. I do weddings and events. I right. design them for uh, a living. And um, wrought iron sort of went out of fashion. And I, <laughs> I had all of these candelabras. So I sawed the bottom of the candelabra off and just kept the, the top and made these balls out of um, two <laughs> hanging baskets that I got at some, you know, 10 cent store or whatever, wow. you know. Um, but I, I've got candles that I put in them uh, if I'm entertaining or having a, an event. But in the meantime, they hold just enough water for birds to have a, a wonderful little water oh, supply, gosh. but not so deep that mosquitoes will ever breed in them. They dry up after a few days. Uh, so I, to me, they're sort of the perfect watering tool for my little, for my little bird friends. And then, and then owl. owl. This is owl, owl. Um, I did not make him. Uh, I'd made all of the sculpture around, and these are copper, fl my version of copper flowers. Uh, but the uh, owl itself came from Creekside Garden Center. Creekside I'll Garden Center Creekside, yeah. and more and more, um, more honey. Uh, are absolutely the two best. Uh, and I can't pick one over the other. Uh, so making these flowers, these copper flowers, mm -hmm. Did you do that? Like where? Where did you make those? I, I, I out here in the yard. You out here in the yard. Together. Yeah, they're set in concrete. So I first <laughs> dug a hole and poured the concrete in and put a, um, a rebar stem in the center, and then I just started wrapping. Um, and they're lightly screwed together. I'm not a welder, but I can really operate a power drill. Uh, <laughs> like nobody's business. There's nothing I can't, <laughs> nothing I can't figure out. Uh, they're beautiful. But uh, they're graceful. They're so good looking. Yeah, and they they just they get so much better with age. Mm -hmm. Copper. And people ask me why I like copper so much, and it's like, well, you know, uh, you know, copper when it's new, and maybe I'll show you some brand new copper down there. Um, was when I was 18 years old. You know, now I'm in my brown stage. <laughs> right. Uh, and There's a good way these it. have started a little frosting of the verdigray color, mm -hmm. which is an older age. Well, we're not going to talk about that. Well, we that won't. Means. Let, please don't ask. You know, <laughs> it, it's not a not a good topic. It's good for other things, not for us. More hydrangeas. Absolutely. And I've got peonies in here. They just finished blooming, so there's no uh, there's no view there, no story there. Um, <laughs> But you can, I did this walkway and I've, you know, been working really hard on getting the moss to grow in between the stones, but I did this walkway just two years ago, but I've tried to make it look like it has been here well, uh, for 30 Forever. years. Uh, but I made it for my goddaughter's wedding. She got married up in the moss garden. Aww. Yes, yes, yes. And this, is my turtle station. Um, just a little bit of water, they can uh, access it from the top. And I put all of my strawberries and blueberries and fruit out here. And the turtles are happy. I have lots of box turtles. I love frogs, love owls, love birds, love turtles, yeah. you know. Um, this is sort of a new, um, I just did this this year, uh, earlier in the year, um, but I made the center stone and another one of my tutorials on YouTube, uh, 
is me making this stone with oh, the good. ginkgo leaf good. in it. And the rest of it is just a, a kit of papers, you know, but I did want it to have something, you know, unique and handmade in okay. it. Uh, I'll watch it. Uh, but they're so easy. This took maybe 40 minutes to make, okay. you know. Um, very, very, very easy. But this is, this is sort of... He has a what? Your sock foot that I gotta... <laughs> you just can't talk about your sock foot. Oh, okay. Well, going downstairs is, is uh, d the most difficult. So they'll see me limping, okay. um, uh, probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I broke my toe and ripped my toenail off doing a wedding. Weddings are not as easy as one would think to do, <laughs> I, you know. But this is, um, this is a sundial that I made. I made the concrete base. I used a leaf, a rubber leaf um, imprint to get my large maple leaf imprint. But these are all my watches. Um, I don't <laughs> wear a watch, uh, but people give you watches. You know, I had a drawer, a lifetime full of watches. So I mounted them in this Into and a made sundial. a sundial on it. Hey, there you go. Um, and set each one of the watches and clocks to the time corresponding to its place in the dial. Clever. Clever. Now, just to circle back, yep. the, base the base that I did not like from the copper from the first pond that we saw. Okay, right. It is what's holding this up. <laughs> but I have artistically decorated it with copper. <laughs> but Imagine that. It's in there, it's in there, because it was sturdy, it just it was ugly. It just uh, needs to be yeah. repurposed. Yeah, you, you, not everything, not everything um, should, has, has to be used. And I'm gonna hold the fence as I go down. We had to stop for a pit stop and um, <laughs> I ran out. So we're at my newly created outdoor living space bar. It's absolutely which stunning. is uh, completely because um, Glenn ran out of wine and I'm getting pretty low. <laughs> so there's for you. Yep. And another glass when I'm on dry land and not in the garden works great to hold my garden glass up. <laughs> and I'm gonna just put a little bit in there. But every- And cheers to you. Thank you. So cheers. Yeah, very much so. Yes. Every house should have an outdoor bar, mm -hmm. uh, just so you don't have to walk in the house every time you want a cocktail. Always. So I have wine uh, coolers that I've installed back here. I have liquor. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of extra work, dusting and cleaning, but I treat this entire space that we're getting ready to walk through as another room of the house. And it is the, to me, the most important room because I spend um, probably three quarters of my day out here, uh, at least. If I'm not in the garden, you can almost guarantee that I'm down here doing, uh, doing something. Sure. But let's look at a few of, the, of my ponds. Okay. Um, I'd love to. Uh, I yeah, uh, water pretty much makes me happy as well. Yeah. Um, now, our in producer is going to hate me for this, and I won't leave it on long. Okay, well, we can talk over it. Uh, but, you know, this is, there are three ponds down here. Okay. Each one sort of uh, has a theme. The fountain is a particular bird that um, lives in the yard. It's their nest. And like on the top of this fountain, on top of the rock, yep. that's a messy wren nest. And they use everything, everything. And then this is a cardinal nest uh, here. And the one that we can't really quite see probably is a robin nest. But wow. I'm gonna turn on um, another water feature and I'll turn it back off because it is kind of noisy. Okay. But the whole point of the ponds were to drown out the noise from the highway. 
I couldn't stand rush hour traffic and and I wanted so I kept adding fountains and ponds until there was no sound uh, but this is my really my crowning glory of engineering um, oh my goodness I I have a fountain that comes out of the sky instead of up in the water oh wow and uh, and the sound from it will drown out uh, a freight train I would think so yeah and the dogs next door yeah but you can see I have lots of moss uh, each pond um, has um, its own um, froggies here we go <laughs> Does that make our uh, camera person happy? <laughs> Probably so. But this is another another view of um, this pond. Uh, and the copper, uh, that's what all of these bird's nests and all of the copper work that I've done, that's what it looks like when it's brand new before it has been exposed to water or sure. air. Right. So I've got those three coils laying there to age them because uh, I'm building a bird's nest in the dry area and so it won't age in my lifetime. So I'm okay. trying to age it before I build the bird's nest. Uh, but around here, you can... There's a painting out here on your patio. There is, there is. It just caught my eye. I'm like, not every patio has a painting out there on it. You know, uh, I painted it, uh, but I painted it with house paint. Exterior <laughs> house paint. Exterior house paint. Okay. And I did it for an event. Uh, I feel like de Kooning would be very happy with you. I, I, absolutely. And so why shouldn't it be outside? Um, it's on canvas. Um, and it's exterior paint. It's not going to go anywhere, right? Right. Nowhere. Time. Nowhere. And the frame uh, is from an event also, but not the same event. It's made out of styrofoam. So oh, it oh. also will last forever. 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 I had to beat it up to make it look like it was old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like new things. Is it like crown molding? Um, no, I had it made by a styrofoam artist. Of course you do. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. Uh, but back here, you get a little closer to look at my privacy wall. And this was to hide the house. Anyway, it absolutely was to hide the house. But most everything on it are recycled materials, lots of corks. I use corks as mulch also. They make great, great mulch. But these are wine bottles. And back here is my outdoor shower. This is absolutely divine. And I really... Come take a shower. Well, last year, I probably went two and a half months before I used the inside. I've got all my toiletries in a tackle box that, <laughs> that don't like uh, being exposed. And I use only biodegradable organic soaps okay. and shampoo. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where, you know, kind of where they go, but right. uh, it is just one of those, those guilty pleasures about me wanting to stand amazing. in the moss and shower. That is just beautiful and amazing. But that's kind of uh, it. I mean, this this wall thing is sort yeah, of. I love this installation. It, it's an, an amalgamation it of all to me sorts in of. Every way. Lots of corks. Lots of. This is a cedar. Yeah, I mean, a walnut and tree. The design and the uh, rhythm. Is yeah. And the empty spots, um, I designed it so that some of the sections will blow out in high wind so that the whole wall didn't come down. And during the tornado last year, the, the high winds, I lost these sections, okay. uh, which they were supposed to. It was no, no big deal. I just haven't replaced them yet. Right. I've been, I wanted, I like change. What were in those? Um, Wood? Walnut was in the one to the far left, and bottles were in here. Okay. Uh, and, I, you know, 
They're okay uh, during the summer because this wonderful tree back yeah, here, right. um, you know, keeps me from looking at the house on the other side. So, you know, it's, I'll get around to it. I'll get around or to not, it. Or not, and that's okay, right? Yeah. I'll have a vision. I'll have a vision. Okay. Well, let's go back yeah. and and maybe just sit down and relax. And this that's what this um, this space is for, is to to really, really just chill out and relax and feel like you're in a in a, another world, another space. Um, you know, my seating area. Yes, I keep fresh flowers and vases out here because I want it to feel like it's part of the house. And it does. You know, and it's so that's done. the easiest way to do it. Um, but I thoroughly have enjoyed and would love for you to come back sometime and maybe go through the house. Oh, and, yes. uh, and, and Terry and has the most incredible art collection. It's just outstanding. And we need to talk about it. You need to hear more about what is, what's going on. Well, yeah, it's, it's sort of a whole different part of me is, uh, you know, if you get me wound up and started talking about every every painting in my house means something to me. And I know that. Either the artist or the painting itself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or, and a few of them I've done as well. I don't paint much anymore. I paint with rock. Concrete and copper and yeah. moss and moss. Yes. yes, we can't forget moss. You can't forget moss. It's but all lovely. Really enjoyed having Glenn here, and hope that you have enjoyed it as well. And please tune in uh, to my YouTube channel if you want to know a little more about this wacky kid, uh, <laughs> you know, and who is a little OCD but uses it always to good good re advantage and results absolutely and on behalf of community arts of bellevue we want to thank you for being with us tonight again and um, always tune in thursday nights at 7 p.m for live from the view uh, we have some great programming coming up i think you'll enjoy everything we, we are going to be bringing to you in the next few weeks so stay tuned for that uh, you can also go to our website for more information which is c-a-o-f-d communityartsofbellevue.org and um, let me know if you need anything or need some information. Uh, thank you for joining us. Terry, thank you so much, man, for your hosting of this beautiful uh, property and gardens and home and patio and it's an amazing place. I wish you could all be here with me. It's so, been my pleasure. Yep. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good night.